Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 18. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about the geometric mean, which is the mean you use when you have growth rates or rates of change. Now we're going to have two formulas. Geometric mean formula number one is what you do when you're actually given the growth rate for each period. Formula number two you calculate the same geometric mean, but all you need is the end value, the begin value, and the number of periods. So which formula to use depends on what data you have. Growth rates, end begin, and number of periods. Now let's scroll down. I have a bunch of important notes there. You can read that, but we're going to cover that, all those notes in this video. Now we're going to start with a stock example. These are the adjusted close prices for Microsoft for each month. We want to calculate the percentage change for each month, which will give us our growth rate. From that, we can calculate our geometric mean. Hey, so I'm going to start down at the bottom. From December to January, the percentage change was equals the end amount divided by the begin amount minus 1. Control Enter, and I'm going to copy this up. I go to the top one, F2. That's looking good. So from December to January, the stock loss minus 0.47%. That's less than minus 1%, about a half, a minus a half percent. Now, this is the growth rate or the percentage change. For our geometric mean calculation, we're going to have to add 1 to that to get what's called the growth factor. So I'm going to say equals 1 plus the percentage change or growth rate, control enter, and copy it down. Now, percentage change or growth rate and the growth factor are closely related. This percentage change, if I multiply the start amount times this percentage change, I get exactly the drop in stock, 22 cents. However, if I were to take the begin amount and multiply it by the growth factor, which is 1 plus the percentage change, I get exactly the end amount. So that's the difference between those two. Now our goal is to get the average compounding rate per period given these percentage changes. But before we do that, I actually want to look at the arithmetic mean, the mean that we did in the last couple of videos. So I'm going to use the average function and highlight our percentage change. You do not want to do this. Hey, when I hit Enter, I get 1.89%. If you were to use that and tell someone, hey, the average return for Microsoft stock over this period was 1.89%, you would be giving them a number that's too high. And let's prove it to ourselves. Let's actually count, because we're going to need the count in our um, formula that we're going to do. So we're going to count how many periods there were. There were 13. And now we need to learn this formula. This is from finance. We can calculate any future value amount if we know the present value or the begin amount. We multiply that times 1 plus the period rate. In our case, the period rate is going to be a ge our geometric mean. And raise it to the number of compounding periods. Now this is a famous formula from finance. It's been around for hundreds of years. Let's go ahead and use it. Equals, and I went ahead and listed the two values here. That's the start amount. See right there, 3641. And we better get this 4623, which is the actual real ending amount. So I'm going to say starting amount, or present value times, in parentheses, 1 plus our period rate. We're mistakenly going to use the arithmetic mean, and we're going to raise it to our number of periods. And lo and behold, when I enter it, it is going to be too high. That's almost always the case with mean, that mean is going to be too high. If all the values didn't change, then it wouldn't have an, any problem. But look at that, 4642, that's bigger than this 4623. So we do not want to use our arithmetic mean when it comes to growth rates or percentage change, especially if we're going to use it to calculate that n value. Now, in some cases, we can use percentage changes in the standard deviation calculation or correlation calculation, but not when you're using the percentage changes to calculate an average you're going to use to calculate an n value. Then you have to use the geometric mean. 
Now let's go ahead and calculate the geometric mean. Now we don't really have to do this whole formula here and take the nth root. We could do that, but there's a built-in function. And what is it called? Geo mean. Now we are going to have to make sure that a couple things are true. These numbers, that's all of the rates over here, but we can't use the growth rate or percentage changes. You have to use the growth factor. So that's the 1 plus. Now when I enter this, the geo mean will actually spit out the growth factor. That's the number we can actually raise to the 13th power and correct, get the correct end value. Now, oftentimes you don't want the growth factor. You actually want the individual growth rate, the average compounding rate. So we can do this again. It's geo mean, and I'm going to take all of these. But you simply subtract 1. And that'll give you the actual true average compounding rate. Now let's go ahead and count, because we're going to do our future value calculation again. Equals, and I'm going to start with the begin amount, or the present value. They call it present value in finance, times 1 plus our actual geometric mean. And we're going to raise it to that 13. And boom, just like that, we see we get the correct end amount. So that's why we shouldn't use the arithmetic mean. And instead, when we're given growth rates, use the geometric mean. Again, if we're calculating the end value, that's what we have to do. Now let's look at our amazing formula number two. All you need to calculate the geometric mean is the begin and end amount and the number of periods. Now, you have to be careful when you make this calculation, because we're going to have to take the end amount and divide it by the beginning, and then raise it to the 1 divided by n, which is the nth root. So I'm going to very carefully, in parentheses, because I want to force the division to happen first. The end amount divided by the begin amount, close parentheses, and I'm going to raise this caret, and I need to raise it to 1 divided by the count. And I have to force this division to happen also before that caret. So there you go. Now, right now, this will give me the average compound factor. And there it is. That's quite amazing. All I had was the, the end and the start and the number of compounding periods. But here, if you want to do that same formula, now, if we subtract 1, we get the GO mean. Now, actually, we want to see an even easier way to do this. And this is brand new in Excel 2013. We can use the RRI, returns the equivalent interest rate for a growth of an investment. It needs NPER, which is total number of periods, N, comma, the present value, that's where we started our begin and the end, or future value. And you got to be kidding me. Boom, there it is. Excel 2013 RRI function is totally awesome. All right, now let's go look at two more examples for geometric mean. Here we have the end, the begin, and the number of periods. I'm going to use my RRI. The NPER, I'm going to say, hey, 2014 minus 1999. Remember, right inside that argument, it will calculate before it moves on to the next. Comma, present value, comma, future value, control enter. And you've got to be kidding me. That is amazing. RRI, a brand new Excel 2013 function calculating the average compounding rate per period. So over your investment, you put in 2,500, you got 6,000. 613.12, and you're like, How, what is my return? There's the average return calculated with geometric mean. Now, one last example here. We have population growth in the year. We simply need to get our growth factor, 1 plus our percentage change for population growth. Get that for each year. And then we do our geo mean equals geo mean. I want to figure out the average compounding rate over this period for population growth, close parenthesis, and I want the actual percentage change or growth rate. So I subtract 1 and Control Enter. So it looks like 0 0.014, or about 1.5%. Wow, geo mean is totally amazing. 
We saw how to do it for from percentage changes, getting our growth factor. And then we saw not to use the arithmetic mean because it gives us an average that's too high. We use geo mean minus 1. And then we saw how if we have end and start amount, we can use RRI to calculate the geometric mean. All right, next video we'll talk about percentiles and quartiles. See you next video.